I am a little late, okay? You're right. I'm sorry. That's fair. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, people of royalty. Look at that big fucking custom string, bro. <laughs> What's up, fellas? Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Stream Arena, Chat Arena, Poke MMO Arena, Me Marinos. What's up? How are we doing? How are we feeling today? I'm excited to get some shunting in. I'm excited to maybe do a gym run. I want a shiny flip. I want to, you know, I want to not do a gym run. I want a shiny flip so that I don't have to do a gym run. Now we're thinking, okay? Uh, if we can make money in five minutes, why would we spend an hour doing it? It's just, it's just math, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see how it goes. Let's have a good day. I'm feeling good. I'm excited. Let's pop into it. All right. The best way that I would go usually look for a shiny to flip would be 25 HP, 25 defense, 25 special defense. I'll maybe mess that around. I want to do male only. I don't mess around. Flipping female shinies is so much harder and so much scarier um, for a couple reasons because it's harder for them to sell. Like, this is an interesting... I mean, 30-30. One times 31, 30-30 is pretty crazy. Plus, what if we'll attack? Flipping tentacles can be really good, especially if you're new to shiny flipping. Um, but if you're kind of more advanced, I think it's better to avoid. But it kind of... Because, like, they can flood really fast as well. A lot of noobs will get... Or, I shouldn't say noobs. But, like, a lot of newer players will get shiny tentacles, and they'll just happily sell them pretty low. You know, like a... Uh, the newer player is happier to sell something lower and faster versus like, you know, be patient and sit and wait for the uh, solid amount or correct amount of Pokemon to flow in. Nature is really important as well, though. If I look for like Adamant or Jolly um, and look for those physical attacking a group, this is Chaos A groups. This is not good. This is a cool Pokemon, though. Um, looking for like Adamant or Jolly. Like, look how few, like, it's, look at the first page. The first page ends at 9.6 mil. Like, that shows you like how few of like, absolutely correct nature pokemon there are um and obviously the correct is going to depend per species and stuff but you can just kind of like eyeball the the stats and everything this ends at 14 mil for just so few there's just so few jolly shinies that's crazy um that's actually nuts let's check stuff like timid and uh, with these stats you can just do any like good nature so timid and modest are good to check as well this one might be flippable hilariously this is actually kind of an interesting one let's do bug this is really, really interesting, actually. I might be able to flip this. Two mil for this. This is a fucking fantastic god tier Volcarona breeder. Um, oh, man. But how will this actually... Oof. Let's like... Let's check by this. Let's do 20... 20, 20, 20 and like these stats and see if there's any... Let's see if there's other competitors with different variations of stats. I don't know if there's going to be any competitors here. What about without the nature? The nature is a huge part of it, though. I feel like this is flippable. I'm going to buy this for 2 mil. It's kind of weird. Kind of like it's it's weird for a 1 times 31 to like potentially be worth this much, but like if you have a Volcarona, like dude, I don't know, man, if you have a shiny Volcarona female or a Larvesta, like this is whew, this is real good for you. This is real good. Although this is also pretty good, but bold. This is also pretty good though. Um I don't this might have been a mistake, but I'm going to try to flip it for like 3. I'm gonna, it, has, it has the particle effect as well, though. I don't know, man. This is a really good... I might sit on this for... I don't know. If I sell it for 3, I think I can sell it kind of fast. I could sell it for 3.2, or like a little higher, and sit on it for a lot longer, but I'm down to sell that for 3. I think that's like a really, really good breeder for like a... Like, you're happy to pay 3 mil for that breeder with that stats, that nature, and everything. With the particle effect for a Volcarona? Oh, hell yeah. That's one shiny flip done. The question becomes, do I want to do another... Ooh, 12 mil for a secret shiny. Like, part of me, I might... Maybe I should just insta-snipe that, but I don't know if it's actually worth, and I don't know if... Uh, I don't want to make that mistake. Yeah, I don't know if it's... You never want to make a mistake. Like, on a, on a 12 mil... I do not want to... I do not feel comfortable pulling the trigger. I think someone got it. On a 12 mil shiny? Oof, I'm sorry. Actually, no, it's flying, isn't it? Yeah, no, I'm not pulling the trigger on that. It's not... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's 2 times 31, which is cool. You could maybe flip this. I'm not. It's too much. It's too much, and I don't know it well enough. I don't know the secret shiny market nearly well enough, and it's constantly moving as well. The secret shiny market just moves so much, man. There's always more shinies coming in and stuff, and that market just moves so fast and so much. It's really hard to make flips in it, unless you're, like, really experienced and have a fair amount of Poke Yen as well. Good capital. I wonder if... Can you actually... Wait, this is actually kind of your brain. Can you search for, like... Wait, I want to see this. Can you search for no... No, no, no. I was curious if you could search for, like, no 31. Is there a way to search this correctly where you could do, like, 0 31 shinies or something? 
I don't know how that'd be possible. Maybe if you do like, if you do this, 30, 30, 30 minimum. No, no, no. It would be like this, right? Oh, it'd be like this. Set the max. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's so gigabrain to search for, um. Oh my God, yes. To be able to search for like, that's really cool. Um, what 2012? That's so cool to me. Wow. I don't know why. I, I don't know. Like what, non one time stone one shinies are kind of rarish. 2015 shiny magma hideout. These are cool to me. Like I almost have an interest in like collecting stuff like this, like older shinies, even that aren't 2012. Let's check. Um, I don't know why that's so cool to me. How many 2012 shinies are there? Let's let's actually check. There's only two listed: Butterfree and Prime Maple. Check 20. My rate limit exceeded. Of course it did. What does that mean, Pat? Rate limit exceeded yesterday. Rate limit exceeded is essentially the devs just like limiting the amount that the because it's like server overload. The servers have been struggling, so that was their way to like kind of get around it um but it's been so like i yeah, today i went to my listings to collect two po two pokemon that sold and i collected one and i got rate limit exceeded i could i literally could eat like it's like stopping basic functions it's kind of brutal but it's better this i guess than like overall fucking server destroyed lag i don't know these are 2013 shinies man i am like I am interested. I I like like 2013. I want to do more 2013 collecting. 2013 is the year that I started playing. I wonder if there's a, I wonder if there's any OTs I would recognize. That's actually a really funny thing to like check for. Uh, not so far. Don't know any of these. I don't know any of these. Nope. Nah. I don't know any of these names. Um, but that's man. That's you know 2013 is my year. I loved that year. I love that Pokemon. Comes to shiny flip, leaves with mons for the collection. Yeah, I gotta be careful. <laughs> I gotta be careful. I'm gonna end up spending more money than I'm making in the flip. Yeah, that's the most. Yep, true. Quick little tip. I, I picked up a bunch of these. Cheap Rotoms. A lot of Rotom swarms happening during the Halloween events. I picked up some cheap Rotoms. I did some Rotom breeds that I have to hatch later. Um, yeah, cheap Rotoms. Pick them all you can. Like, look at all these, like, 20 plus in, like, five stats. Like, I just need to brace special attack. And, like, yeah, a lot of cheap Rotoms. Pick them up all you can. All right, pop the charm whenever you're ready. There you go. Thank you, Avon back. Let's encounter our Crobat. Let's see if it's shiny. If it's not, I'm going to... Okay, it's not. See you later. Um, can I even kill it, actually? I'm strength spam. Probably not. I'm just going to, like, run. I'm going to run from it, dig out, and then zoom over to... We're shiny hunting Swablu today. Beautiful gold shiny. Very cool Pokemon. We're going to zoom over to Sinnoh as fast as possible. Over in Celestic Town. The really cool thing about Celestic Town is there's two fantastic shunts right here. There's uh, Psyduck in this pond to the left, and there's Swablu over here. Now, to hunt Swablu, I do have to keybind Defog. Let me head over to Fog. We're going to keybind that to ooh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. What about my E key? So you have, to, you have to Defog every time here before you can Sweet Scent. But then you, it's 100% chance for Swablu. Fantastic, beautiful, shiny. Uh, I'm actually synchronizing Careful Nature, funnily enough. The reason being, it's on purpose. The reason being, I'm obsessed with Turbo Setup Pokemon. And what uh, Altaria has access to, it's an NU Pokemon, which is awesome. Altaria has access to Cotton Guard and Roost. Cotton Guard is a really annoying move, and I love it so much. So does Bufalon also has with no sustain. Um, Cotton Guard is a move that boosts your defense by three stages. So what you do is you like put everything naturally into special defense. Um, so you do like Altaria is a pretty good, like very good special defense wall, except for ice attacks. Obviously, you can only set this Pokemon up if there's no ice beams or no ice moves lurking on your opponent's team. You have to take care of those threats first. Then you try to turbo set up the Altaria and it's kind of unkillable. What you do is you run like you run full um, def you run full special defense investment. So 252 HP, 252 special defense. Um, yeah, Dragon Dance. We'll get to that in a second. So you do 252. I shouldn't have left, but oops. You do 252 Special Defense EVs, 252 HP, Careful Nature, invest fully into Special Defense Bolt. Then you use Cotton Guard to, to set up your your nat, your uh, physical defense, and then you Dragon Dance. So it's like Cotton Guard makes one Cotton Guard makes you fucking unkillable. Uh, then you also have Roost to make you lose the flying type to dodge ice beam attacks. Um, and you also have Dragon Dance to eventually increase your So you run like Cotton Guard, D-Dance, Dragon Claw, and then there's no Fairy type, so nothing's immune to D-Claw, which is actually like a huge benefit, obviously, here in Pokemon. Um, D-Claw, and then like some sort of other, or Roost, I guess, yeah. Cotton Guard, it's just, a yeah, four moves. If Fairy Guard comes out, or Fairy comes out, it kills this Pokemon. But without Fairy, it's like actually funny as shit. Uh, Cotton Guard... D-Dance, Roost, like three setup moves, 
declaw um yeah that's the set it's really crazy it's not it's like fun it's a lot like um it's very similar to one man army mill tank which is one of my favorite pvp sets of all time which is mill tank with curse body slam milk drink and heal bell which is awesome when do you think they'll release fairies i think it's possible like i need to stop lepe i need to teleport here um i think it's very it may sound dumb to a lot of people i think it's very possible coming up in the 11th anniversary event um is it a four times week to ice yes exactly that's why you have to take care of all that's why you cannot set it up until all ice moves are taken care of um and just have to be really smart and be aware of that um yeah, but yeah, I think it's possible they release fairies in the in the 11th anniversary event coming up. I think it's very, very possible. They hinted at some big new mechanic coming. A big new mechanic. It is going to be so interesting if they introduce fairy types without, like, Gen 6 plus Pokemon. So it's just, like, Clefairy, Snubble, Granbull, um, stuff like that. Uh, Osmeril is a huge one that would get access to fairy type. And then, like, uh, yeah, like Alakazam getting Dazzling Beam, like certain coverages. That would be so interesting. I think it'd be really cool to see them introduce fairy type with just Gen 5 and below Pokemon um, and just see how that works out. If it's not obvious or clear enough, I'm obviously just theory crafting and, like, kind of semi guessing. I, we don't know what's coming. I'm just, I'm just talking about it. You know, what if it happens, right? Is there a grass move that hits multiple Pokemon? Razor Leaf is, like, one of the only ones I know of. There might be another. Razor Leaf comes to mind. It's not great. But uh, it's like 55 bits. But I'm pretty sure Razor Leaf is AOE, which is very funny. Uh, you don't think of it as that such because like an early game, mid game move. Uh, all adjacent foes. Yeah, Razor Leaf is AOE. The reason why the difference between immunity and, and like even like some of those eight times resistance is so huge. Think of like Clefable, right? Imagine you keep a level or a, a Clefable in the back with one HP for the game, right? If that Clefable is fairy type and immune to dragon later game on like a choice specs Draco Meteor High Dragon, you can switch in the Clefable and then it gets a free recover or a free soft boil, right? Like, cause the, cause the Draco, the Draco it's immune, right? It has to switch out. But if it's like eight times resist, it can still get that chip in the like KO, or yeah, like chip is important. Like a little, the like percentages of HP and Pokemon and Pokemon just matter so much. Um, the difference between like a six to eight times resist versus an immunity is 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 brutal, right? It's the same reason why it's often worth in competitive play. It depends on the matchup, but it can be worth to like keep a one HP Ghost type around to like block Rapid Spin later on, to like not let them get rid of Stealth Rocks, stuff like that. Like immunities are so powerful. Uh, comparatively to like even if something was like 10 times resisting damage like immunities are really really good hey pat is there any real reason to catch the minor pokemon around the alpha swarm those pokemon can also have hidden ability access um so if it's like a pokemon that has like a pretty good base price just for having hidden ability access that's kind of the reason why I played this game for a month. I have a rerun team, two PvP teams, catching Pokemon and all of that. I have four mil at the moment. I really want the motorcycle. I think it's worth buying. I I think so, man. It's up to, obviously if you, like I think if you're gonna get any vanity as well, if you're gonna spend like a lot of your Pokemon on any it's up to you, obviously, if you, how much you like it, but like if you're gonna get any vanity, get a bicycle. They stand out so much. The bite skins, like you're gonna be using it all the time. Like you're gonna be biking back and forth. Like when, whether you're shunting, doing your gym run, whatever you're doing in game, you're gonna see it all the time. Um, you'll make the money back pretty fast. Like Pokeyen, you can make pretty fast in this game. If you, you know, seems like you make a lot. Like you're doing great for how long you've been playing. Um, I mean, what like I don't know. Like the, it's never gonna be like cheaper than what it is right now until like next year, like next Halloween when it comes back, it'll be cheap again. So. It's either buy it now or buy it next year. Um, it shouldn't be like if you try to buy it like in six months, it's going to be expensive probably. Hey, Pat, what do you think about Alpha Zoroa as an investment? Alpha Zoroa could be really good or really meh. Um, it really depends on if it's seasonal. If Alpha Zoroa comes comes back next year, um, then it's like, you know, if you sell it in six months and make money, sure. But they're pretty expensive right now. Like it really is going to depend. It just depends if they're going to be a one time thing similar to um alpha canto starters if they're a one-time thing then yeah long term they'll just go up like you know at a certain rate right um but if they're seasonal they're gonna be nothing yeah i was gonna say like worst case scenario they're probably a decent short term to like midterm investment but the issue is they're already so expensive like are you really buying these to in to invest like if they're already 700k i don't know i don't know if i see these going up like i don't know man i'm gonna be honest that feels really expensive I feel like they could, I, like, I could, it's possible they just drop. Like, after the event, it's very possible they just drop to, like, 400k or something. Because um, that, because they're already so high. 
Yeah, that's it's another thing to consider. Like the only people really buying Alpha Zoroas, at least in bulk, are crazy Shalfa hunters who are already rich as fuck. To be fair, like they're spending like one to two billion Pokien on a on a on a shiny hunt. So like, I mean that's fair, but yeah, it's definitely nuts. It is nighttime in game. I probably should I probably should be at Tauros. Ooh, I didn't think about that. Tauros's spawn didn't get brutalized, right? It's still 50-50 with like uh, Gloom and Tauros. Let me head over to Tauros. Ooh, Spirit Tomb, actually. Let's go check that really quick. That's actually awesome. 23,000 encounters, by the way. Kind of a cool number. Okay, we're going to do the Tauros hunt here in Joe's. This is nighttime. I want to abuse my nighttime shunts more when I can, when I'm on time, you know? How unrealistic of a goal is a blue stall for a new player? Ah, oh, man. I... I, I love being the optimist who is like, hell yeah, man. Go. I mean, I would still say go for it. It's a long one. Uh, if you're coming in as a new player and you want to go for the blue flaming skull, it's at least going to be like a four year journey, probably to it, right? Maybe more. Um, the issue is if you're a new player, you're going to spend your first year, you're going to spend your first year, maybe first couple, like three to six months, um, beating all the storylines, um, getting a Jimmy run team, making your upfront capital, getting catching Pokemon, all your utility Pokemon, Smeargles, uh, synchronize, yada, yada, right? And then you're going to, that's really, that'll be like your first six months, right? And you'll spend, you know, the rest of your time, like building up capital. Maybe after one year of playing, or maybe like eight to eight months to one year, you'll start making investments and then you got to make those investments and then you got to sit on those investments for like two to three to four years and once you sell all those off you got to hope that you have enough pokeyen for that blue flaming skull aka like at the time of recording like two billion pokeyen right and then think about it like this as well right like while you're spending those you know two to four years making the money for that blue skull it's going up in value so by the time it's tough man it's really tough um there are very few things that are out, very very few things extremely few things in pokemo that are like out of reach i'd say to a to the average new player but i think like it's really expensive hyper expensive vanities that are like 1 billion plus like i think the i think a new player could go for the scythe like a new player could come in go hard grind make good investments and buy the scythe in two years right a 500 to 600 mil vanity that's doable the difference between 500 mil to like two bill is just so drastic. Um, and by the time you have the money for it, it's probably like four bill, um, maybe even more. It's, it's a tough one, it's a tough combo. Rumel says, I was just playing hard mode for two hours at work in my downtime, made 800,000 Pokey in. Like, like it obviously hard mode, hard mode, hard mode pumping is unbelievable. It's so good. Hey, Pat, do you know if EV stats apply immediately or only upon a level up? No, they apply immediately. That's a great question because you can actually, like, that's a really great question. Because certain speed runs of Pokemon will, like, route, will, like, pick their route in a certain way to, like, within a fight, you will, like, kill a Pokemon and get, like, two speed EVs. And those EVs will allow you to speed out speed literally the next Pokemon in that same fight. Um, certain speed runs are optimized to that extent, which is really, really cool. One of the most brutal things that happens in Pokemon Manson is when you're breeding a Pokemon, you're like done the breed five times 31, got the nature, it's perfect, and then you realize you forgot a crucial egg move. Uh, it sucks, man. Like it can make certain Pokemon unusable, right? Like things like like Conkletor needs Mach Punch. Uh, like you said, Aerodactyl needs Wide Guard for PVM purposes, for like for um for the Pumpkin Boss. Like there, yeah. That got, one of the first things that I always say when you go to breed a Pokemon, check egg moves first first thing first now even i forget that sometimes so it's a really easy thing to forget you know but it sucks when it does do you think people would be interested in a uh, full box of bad quilava or should i release them someone who wants to shiny hunt cyndaquil yeah absolutely the tough thing is to sell a box of mons like that you have to you definitely shouldn't release them they probably have a decent base value they might not actually they're kind of common now um but the tough thing with that is you have to find someone who is willing to start they're like, they haven't started shunting yet. So like someone who's like 15,000 encounters into shiny, so they don't, they don't need any Cyndaquils. They, you know, they loop with the, they just need more dittos, right? But someone who's looking to start the Cyndaquil hunt is going to want those Quilavas. So finding someone to buy that might be a little tough. Uh, you can use my Discord or Trade Chat or the forums, my best recommendation. And then other than that, uh, you probably, you probably price them at like 2k per because they're like what 2500 on the gtl so you probably sell them at 2k per dodge listing fee make more money sell them for cheaper bam bam win win daytime there is the fear of horde time to switch up locations but i just go back to i'm gonna go back to swablu you know what actually let's do dug trio 
I either do Swablu or Dug Trio. On Charm, I probably should be doing times five Lepa spots. I'm down to do Dug Trio. Let me grab my Runaway, Raticate. All right, back to Dug Trio. Back in the Sandstorm, fellas. Let's see how it goes today. This is such a funny thing. Something I've noticed, every single stream where I get a Shiny gets um, either demonetized or, or like knocked down a level of monetization. Can you guys guess why? It's because of excessive cursing. I already curse a lot in my like stream stuff, but whenever I get a shiny, I'm like, oh, look, heck yeah, blah, blah, you know, F yeah, blah, blah. Every single time I get a shiny, I almost always get demonetized on that stream because of like excessive back-to-back -back cursing, which is kind of funny. This is actually, okay, this is actually a really great and interesting question. Rare candy for 10K, is that a good investment? Rare candies can be a good short-term investment, like six to eight months, maybe six to 12 months. Um, because they often rise up to that 17 to 18k price. Now, the last time they rose up on that price was around Johto release. So there was a huge, you know, rise of players that wanted those quick levels, to, like get into the game, do Johto, whatever, right? Keep in mind, though, this is a really important thing I'm about to say, okay? I would not recommend investing in rare candies until the end of event season. It's the beginning, okay? Rare candies are starting to come out of goodie bags, yes, but they're also going to come out of christmas presents they're also going to come out of 11th anniversary chests they're also going to come out of um lunar new year envelopes like why would you invest now when they're probably just going to drop like if you want to invest in something like rare candies or like certain tms or certain items that are lowered their price temporarily via opening things from like events do it at the end of event season do it at the end okay don't do it now um yeah rare candies have dropped to like six to seven to eight k in the past yeah and then selling for 15 to 18 k yep uh, make sure to wait. Just wait. Don't buy now. Just wait towards the end of the event or event season, the full event season, not even just like the end of this event. That's kind of, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that's kind of genius. Like there's another, another reason to shiny hunt Watchhog is because it, it has Illuminate. So it makes it a, what other abilities does it have? Such so a utility shiny. I didn't even think about that. Watchhog. I would have never even thought about that. Yeah, it's, it's a good utility shiny even. Wait, Watchhog has Analytic? Dude, Analytic is one of the coolest Pokemon abilities. I love Analytic. For those who don't know, Analytic is a ability that makes you, it boosts your move if you, it boosts your damage, it like doubles your damage, or is it 1.5 times? It's such a huge damage boost if you move last, if you move second, like, you know, second in a 1v1 battle. Um, man, it's, it's a really weird move to see on Watch Hard with 170, or 77 speed. What a weird speed tier. Like, it's not quite slow enough. It's not quite slow enough to use Analytic, also not tanky enough to use Analytic, and it's also not fast enough to be a threat. Poor Watch Hard, man. Absolutely nothing, nothing going on, but cool shiny. Better than Starmie? I actually think Starmie can use Analytic a lot better than Watch Hog. The reason being is because of switch-ins. Like, Starmie's already a powerful Pokemon. Even though it's really fast with Analytic, it's kind of funny. But it, but switch-ins count. So if, if, um, if you, like, switch in Starmie and force a switch out from your opponent and your Analytic Starmie, it'll actually, like, you'll get the boost, which is really good. Like, that's really good. If you, like, switch a Starmie into, um... Yeah, it's actually so good. If you switch a Starmie into Dragonite and make them switch out by threatening Ice Beam, and they switch in, what's a, I don't know, what's a Mon? Like something, something into like, yeah, it, it, to like tank that Ice Beam, and you go for like a different move, and you get Analytic Boost, now you're doing a lot of, it's, yeah. Uh, Analytic on Starmie is actually relevant, which is cool. I've said this for a while, I think I've actually built a competitive Pokemon of this variant. Dude, I think Analytic Choice Specs Magnezone is underrated. Um, The reason being, so like, okay, Picture this, right? You're facing down a scissor, a choice band scissor locked into bullet punch, okay? You switch in your Magna Zone, take very little damage. Um, they try, they go to switch out, hoping you're not magnet pulled. They want to test it, right? Um, they go to switch out, and you can analytic choice specs stab vault switch with Magna Zone. So not only are you getting off disgusting damage with all of that in mind, with like a 135. Base special attack. I think I think choice specs analytic magna zone is underrated as fuck, and it could be a demon. Um, you could do so much damage as long as, long as, long as, as, like, as, long as they don't go ground type. The scary thing is ground type, but even then, flash if you predict it in real flash cannon. Um, yeah, you could have a monster vault switch on your hands like that. That like that kind of vault switch could look like, unironically swing a game. Like, man, a powerful vault switch that that does a shit ton of damage that also allows you to position. Like that's the kind of things that just wins games. Like that's so good. Hey, Pat, are the two Blastoises necessary? I don't have enough Poker Yen for, for two right now, but I have one with Choice Specs. Also, have a, yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, the two, so 
the two Blastoises are eating my lunch. The two Blastoises in the gym rerun literally only add two gyms. They allow you to do Blaine and the Fire Gym at Stration City, the Fire Leader. That's it. Um, you really don't need, you don't need the double Blastoises. They help. They're nice, but like, as long as you have like one Blastoise in the back or like one uh, level 100 like Earthquake user, something to take care of Flash Fire Mons at Nimbasa City. Um, Pewter City and like yeah, there's like two or three possible flash fire mods that can exist. So as long as you have answers to those, you're totally fine. Do you have any current shiny flips? Yes. I can one sec. Let me look this trigger. There we go. Uh what's if I get rate limit exceeded? I know I have at least one. I just did one this morning. I think I have two, I have three. I have three active shiny flips. A sock, a tentacle, and a Durant. Three active shiny flips. This guy is so unique. It's like four times 30 plus. It's gonna be hard and modest. It's gonna be weird to sell. It's gonna be kind of hard to sell, but it's really good. And the price is accurate. I think so. Uh, the sock is really cool. Humanoid egg group, male, good stats. The Durant is for like modest nature. This, with the new particle effect, this is for like a um, Bulgarona. Really good bug, bug special attack. And, like, having the modest nature is so good here with 20 plus in every year. Uh, plus the particle is cool. What's your top five rated shinies that are 100% horde encounters? Ooh, that's a really good question. So the way I'd answer this question was like, what are my top five shinies that are times five hordes, 100% encounter and near a PC? So it's like free, easy beginner hunts. That's how I would qualify this. Um, off the top of my head, Drudagon and Vanillish are both, which are in like the same location, Icarus City. Um, yeah, Drudagon and Vanillish are up there for me. Those two are fantastic. There's a lot of great ones I can think of, but like, what are, what are my, what are the best? You know, what are the best? Uh, Drudagon and Vanillish are the two that comes to mind. Um, I'll have to think. Marl and Psyduck are good, but are they the best? Slowbro is, Quagsire slash Wooper uh, is pretty good. Hopip, yep, Hopip's up there. So Hopip's number three, or probably number one or whatever. I, I like Hopip. Hopip, Drudagon, Vanillish are my top three so far. I'll think on a, I'll think on a couple more. But those are some great options. Heat more, heat more is great. Oh, heat more is fantastic. Heat more number four. Yeah. Oh man, shiny heat more is so underrated. I feel like number five is gonna be one that I own. So I probably own my favorite, you know, shinies that are easy to get. Um, let me finish. I'm gonna finish this inventory. So I'll teleport back and we'll double check. Okay, back to the PC. Let's go over my shiny box and see. I'm looking for like the best times five horde shinies. Oh, stun fist. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Stun Fist. Oh, Nita Reno is great as well. Man. Time there's so many good beginner shunts, dude. These are time these are all times five horde hunts. 100 percent chance to get that don't require any Pokien. Um so good. Stun Fist. Hop it. Be careful with Hop It's hard one to catch. But Hop it. Uh Quagsire is great. Vanillish, Drudagon, Nido King, Galark needs Lepas, Celio. Um, just, I like Bufalon as a personal thing. Ra Some people like Rapidash Ponyta. Heatmore is, I love, so underrated. Uh, Slowbro is good. Scrafty. Scrafty doesn't need Lepas. Uh, it's not 100%. You have to, like, split it with, um, Throw and Sock, but... Wait, no, it's 100% at nighttime, though. It's 100% at nighttime, I think. That, dude, there's, there's so many good times 5 Horde Shinies. There's so many good ones you can do for free. Absolutely, for beginner players. This is a great question. How would I price check something like this? This is this is a complicated price check, the Starly. Um, the way that I would do something like this is just a couple different ways, okay? Um, let me like pull it up here, okay. Is it, I, hope, I, hope I don't get rate limit exceeded. There's a couple different ways you can price check this. I would, I would do egg group flying male, and you could do like 31 here, 25, 25, 25, 20, 20. I might even do like 20 here. This is how I this is how I would start, right? Um obviously this is actually kind of comparable, which is really funny. This is actually stupidly comparable, but 10k is kind of this is this, someone gonna flip this. This is flippable. Um This feels too cheap. I would probably just sell this for like 25 to 30k. Like I would use the price checks here and then sort of do it in between in like logical adjustment. Um you're never gonna get an exact price check. You're kind of just gonna like free ball it and kind of just go by some game knowledge. Um, if you could buy this and sell it for like 20 to 25k as well, uh, you're probably you're probably selling 
this starly for 20 25 to 30k would be my would be my personal recommendation if i decide to change my ot will all my mons under will be changed to the new name yes it's a very like weird mechanic but yes uh for a while that didn't actually work like that but if you have like 30 ot shinies and you change your ot you change your name in game don't worry all those ot's will actually flip i think once you you might have to like put them in your party for a second put them back in the pc that might register it but yeah uh, that actually does work which is super nice you don't lose your ot's from changing your in-game name do you guys prefer like 15 minute 20 minute stream recaps like this is probably gonna be a shorter stream it's funny like, had a really good stream a lot of discussion but not, not that many like clip worthy moments but i think it's like a shorter recap at the moment but I'm curious, I've, I've had some stream recaps reach like hour long recently, and I'm curious people's opinions. Uh, long ones, longer the better. Uh, long, everyone's saying long. If I'm, to be fair, if I'm asking my like Twitch chat, you're probably already likely to, to consume long form content if you're like watching streams. So I'm curious for YouTube watchers, video watchers, I, I do appreciate your feedback. Like, do you prefer 15 minute, 20, like what stream recap length? Sometimes, I'm going to be honest, a lot of times it's like out of my control, but I can like try to cut some stuff that's like less interesting. Like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. What's, you know, what's stream recap we're looking for, right? It's like with stream recaps, I can put up like, I can upload like, stream recaps have changed the way I do YouTube. It's, it's, and I'm glad, I'm honored that people like them. It's like, it actually makes my job and my life so much easier if people like stream recaps. It's, it's a, oh my God, it saves, it's so nice. Um, saves so much time with recording and so, yeah, it's just so nice. Um, but yeah, like, I, yeah, I don't know. Like I can, I can do like four, you know, four stream recaps a week because I stream, you know, e easy peasy. So I think, I think, I think they're cool. I, I watch a lot of stream recaps from other streamers. So I get the appeal. Like if you, I'll watch what I'll do. So I'll, I'll watch part of a stream, right? But I'll either like miss the beginning of a conversation or miss the end. So if I go watch the stream recap, I can like get the full picture. And that's like really nice sometimes since since streams are done such a, such a live format, sometimes you miss certain parts. So it's nice to like go back and check. Um, that's one benefit. And then obviously people who just can't watch streams at all, um, who are able to like come home from work and then like, get, get a quick like one hour recap on all the news in Pokemo, community shinies. Like so many things are discussed in stream recaps or just in streams in general that Hopefully it's, you know, entertaining if you care about Pokemon at all. Do you think one cat hat increases more in price than the other post event? Probably. It's the same thing. I, I would assume it's similar to like the gray werewolf mask versus the brown. Um, now the question, dude, predicting which one. So gray werewolf is 1.8 mil. What's the brown? 1 mil. 800k difference is pretty massive. Now predicting which one is going to be more valuable. I have no idea. I, I totally got the the wa I got the werewolf one way wrong. I predicted brown because I thought more people would like that because it's just like a very neutral. It's like what, what you think of when you think of like a wolf, I guess. Brown. I don't I don't know. It seemed more natural to me. I guess gray wolves are. I don't know. But yeah, no gray wolf won out, so I was wrong on that. Um, I yeah, dude, I I have no idea which cat hat will be more expensive than down the line, but probably one of them will rise above the other. Did you just reach a hundred thousand channel points, Tom? That's legitimately fucking impressive. Congratulations, man. That's nuts. Uh, nuts. A hundred thousand channel points. I gotta add some higher tier rewards, man. Anyways, that's gonna put me up to 26,111 encounters. I think that's where I'm gonna call it today, fellas. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching today's stream. It was a lot of fun. Pretty good one. Four and a half hour stream. Kind of cool. Crazy. Today was the most, I think I said, it was a, not even, it was a crazy stream. Today was the most subs I've ever received on a live stream. Um, watching this VOD, full VOD is definitely where I cut out a lot of that because I don't want to like bog it down with just gifted subs but if you had the live vod it was mind-blowing so thank you guys for watching for an incredible day an incredible stream squeak 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 noises like the video if you enjoyed it dislike if not subscribe for daily pokemon videos i do upload every single day follow the twitch for streams monday through thursday at 12 p.m et discord's down below if you care about that and if you want to go above and beyond like many of you did today and all the gifts and everything twitch subs twitch primes uh youtube memberships and PayPal's like Venmo donations do go a very long way. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow for Thursday's stream. Have a good one. Peace, Areno. Yo, Petrowski here. Firstly, thank you so much for watching till the very end of the video. I truly hope it was worth your time today. And secondly, thanks to everybody whose name is listed here. You guys all go above and beyond and allow me to make daily content. Thanks again. Have a great day.